1 Peter 1 for some weeks, I think actually this is the uh, 12th time uh, we've been on this subject, the 12th part, that we're calling God's imperishable word seed. And our text is here in 1 Peter, the first chapter. 1 Peter 1 says, verse 23, says, we, we have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. How many believe you have been born again? Yes. Amen. This is describing how it happened. There's a similarity between the new birth of the inner man and the birth of and formation of your body. And he's comparing and contrasting natural human seed to divine spirit seed. Your and my body is the result of a human seed. You wouldn't have a body. Your body wouldn't exist except for a human seed and a human mother. But uh, that seed is a corruptible seed. Corruptible means, can also be translated perishable or that which decays, that which grows old dies, decays. Every human seed is a corruptible seed. It reaches its full development and bloom and then it starts to decay and dies. But our inner man, inner man has been born again by a divine imperishable Seed that cannot die, Amen. that cannot age or decay. Anybody glad about this? Amen. You are not just a body and a brain. Your brain is not your mind. Sometimes people think, you know, I'm... Maybe they're studying or cramming for an exam and they're thinking, man, I think I got something in every one of these cells. <laughs> you know, my brain is just maxed out. Yeah. Your brain is not your mind. Right. It's the physical organ that your mind functions through. But your mind is not physical. You can't touch a mind with a physical hand. And the Lord tears is coming and your body dies you'll come out of your body like a hand comes out of a glove and you'll still have your mind. Your mind's a part of your spirit and eternal being, inner man. And uh, you're born again of, a, of an incorruptible seed. Everybody say incorruptible. incorruptible. Now keep reading the next couple of verses. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower thereof falls away. He's describing that which is corruptible. Verse 25, but the word of the Lord, you and I are to be so jazzed. <laughs> About the Word of God. We, yes. we ought to be excited. Yes. Anytime anything about the Word of God is coming up yes. or coming out or being spoken or being read or said or heard. Amen. Because it's coming from the same source that said light be. Amen. <laughs> from which... All of the universe has come. 
The word of the Lord endures forever. It, every good word you get in this life, you will carry with you throughout the ages to come. It'll always be relevant. It'll always be life-giving a thousand years from now, a hundred thousand years from now, a hundred million years from now. It will still be the Word of God which lives and abides forever. It does not run out of batteries. It does. We see we it's hard for us to relate because everything we know about has a finite amount of energy and ability and power. And you got to refill your tank and you got to recharge this and you got not God. God. He never needs recharging. (laughs) And his word that comes out of him is like him. It's part of him. This is the word which by the gospel is preached to you. Now keep reading in, in the second chapter. This wasn't written in chapter and verse, but in 2.1, keep going. Wherefore. Now wherefore means he's connecting what he's saying now to what he just said. Amen. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may what? Grow Grow thereby. And I didn't see that this to just yesterday. How, you know, how this is completely tied together. Verse 1, you've got to lay this aside in order for the word of God to cause you to Grow. (laughs) In 1 Corinthians 3, don't turn there, but we've been looking at it. It talks about how he said, uh, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. He said, you are, one translation said, you are God's garden. You are God's cultivation, God's garden to be planted. And so the way God does things in our life is he sows his word into us. His words are divine spirit seeds. And if we'll receive it and the conditions are right, that seed will develop in us and make changes in us until it shows up outside of us as well. Just like planting a seed into the ground. Now go to Luke chapter 8, please. Jesus taught what we call the parable of the sower. You could also call it the parable of the seed. These are titles that that men gave. But in Luke The 8th chapter and the 4th verse. Luke 8, 4. It says, When much people were gathered together and they were come to him out of every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some, some seed, fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some, some seed, fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other, other seed, fell on good ground. And sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. This is really amazing that one seed can become a hundred. It's miraculous. We see it in nature. It's not an uncommon thing. I mean, a real 
happening wheat harvest can be 50-fold. I mean, there's, it's possible a corn harvest could be 300-fold. You think about it, a couple of kernels, and then you got this stalk with all these ears and all these kernels. One kernel turns into a hundred. We used to it, but it's miraculous. It's miraculous. Seven billion people on the planet. There used to be two. <laughs> Once upon a time. <laughs> uh, and, and does this really work in every area of life? This is the key to getting out of lack financially. It's not a get quick scheme. It's a matter of, of applying the principles. People who have become wealthy in the natural how have they done it again and again? Invested. Mm -hmm. A little bit of money became more money. And instead of just blowing it and spending it, they planted it mm -hmm. somewhere else. They invested it somewhere else. Right? Yes. This principle works everywhere. Keep reading. His disciples asked him, what might this parable be? Keep reading. He said, to you it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. I, I understand that better than I ever have, verse 10. For, for a while I, I didn't get that. I thought, well, why, why tell them in parables? Because then he would explain things without a parable to his disciples. And he said to them, it's not given. Huh? Why? And you'll see, if you put this with the other passages that talk about it, this principle. Uh, to him that has, shall more be given. But to him that has not, shall be taken away even that which he has. And him that has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the principle. You keep hearing that, don't you? Him that has ears to hear. What does that mean? Well, that, uh, most all of them had these things on the side of their head. They could detect sound waves. He's not talking about that. What's he talking about? What, what distinguishes this person doesn't have ears to hear from this person does have ears to hear? What does... What's the difference? You'll see this as we go, but it has to do with the heart. The heart. A willing heart makes a hearing ear. And with that willingness is respect. Those who respect and value what the Lord is saying and those who are willing to do it will hear what others don't. They will see what others don't. People who imagine themselves so smart but have no respect for God, to them the Bible is a closed book. Because you, you can't get revelation of truth because you're so smart. I don't care how brilliant others may assess you to be. You can't get it through extreme study unless the Holy Spirit reaches inside you mm -hmm. and turns the light on. Amen. You don't see it. That's right. And he doesn't cast his pearls before swine. He didn't give his holy precious things to people who despise them. The knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, the understanding of God, Proverbs says, begins with the fear of the Lord, with the reverence of Him. You show Him respect. You bow your knee and acknowledge His Lordship. You acknowledge He gives you your every breath. 
and the brightness of your mind. You show him some respect and your eyes will come open. You'll see things you never saw before. You show him some respect. You make a decision in your heart. Lord, you show me what to do. I'll do it. He knows if you mean business or not. If you do, your ears will come open. You'll hear things you've never understood before. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. You believe it or not? Yes. <laughs> you get smart mouth with him. You take attitude with him. You'll stumble along in the dark and be a fool and think you're smart. It's sad. It is. <laughs> But the truth, oh, praise God, will make you free. Let's keep reading. He said, now the seed is the word of God. Say it out loud. The seed is the word of God. Say it again. The seed is the word of God. Is the word of God seed? How does it work? Like a seed works. This is mind renewal. This is mind renewal. I, I, I don't think most people coming to church and hearing a message have this in mind. Right? They, they come and they think, yeah, those were some interesting points. Maybe made a couple of notes. Got some knowledge. The end. Next. Tell me something else. But they don't have the understanding. No, if it really was a word from the Lord, it's a seed. And it either got in you or it didn't. Just because you're in the service don't mean it got in you. And even though it got in you, doesn't mean it'll produce results. It's precious. It needs to be cared for. It needs to be watered. Is that right? Yes. And it needs to be kept. You need to talk about it and hear it some more and meditate on it and hear it again Amen. and realize that like a seed, it's going to, if you'll do it, it's going to germinate. It's going to begin to unfold. It's going to begin to put roots down in you. It's not just blessing your mind a little bit. It's going to change you from the inside out. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what he's talking about is fruit that remains. The seed's the word of God. Verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then comes the devil and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So they heard the word, but they were not saved. Verse 13. They on the rock, are they which when they hear, receive the word. Now see, they got further than the wayside ground because they received it. And one of the indications that you did receive it is joy. Amen. They received the word with joy, but there's a problem. Have no root. Shallow reception. They were quick to receive and quick to shout, but also quick to quit. Quick to give up. Which for a while believe. And in time of temptation. Fall away. Will your faith be tried? Oh, yes. yes it will. Yes. That which fell among thorns are they. Which when they have heard. Go forth and are choked. With cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And bring no fruit. To perfection. Three of the four got no harvest, no fruit, no results. Is it possible to hear the Word of God and get no results? Is it possible to hear the Word of God and receive it and get excited and still get no results? It is. It is. This would answer a lot of questions. Only one out of the four. 25% if you want to call it that. Got results. But who's it up to? Who's the 25%? Who's the one in four? Who's? I want to hear you say it. I am 
good ground. Oh, come on, come on. I am good ground. I'm good ground. By the grace of God and by my choice. Right? I'm good ground. Well, if I'm good ground, I'm not going to be like these previous three. I'm going to be like the good ground we're reading right now, verse 15. Amen. Which is why these, we've, this is our 12th lesson on this. We're camping on this. We don't want to do what the wayside, stony ground, thorny ground did. We do want to do what the good ground did. I want to hear you say it again. I am good ground. I'm good ground. That on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. There's a lot in here. If Jesus was standing here himself, you could see him. And he said, I'm going to tell you how to be good ground. And get results every time. Amen. Wouldn't be any more true than what you're reading right now. That's right. Is that right? That's right? Did Jesus say this? Verse 15. Yeah. Yeah. These are his words. Right. And so we see by contrast. What good ground is. These other three are not. And of all the things he could have mentioned. That make good ground. Good ground. He mentions two. What are they? Honesty. And patience. Honesty. And patience. Now the word for honesty. Is like you would think. In fact. The same word translated honest. Is sometimes translated good. Because you can't separate good. From honest. Honest. And if you'll notice, honor and honest have the same roots. And if you'll notice, truth and trust have the same root. Why? You can't, if you trust without truth, you're a fool. You're deceived. How many know you should only trust truth? If you're trusting a lie, you're deceived. And you can't have honor without honesty. And you can't make good out of dishonest. I've heard people say, you know, you know, he's a good guy. Now he may lie to you, but he's got a good heart. That doesn't work. Now, anybody can make a mistake. Anybody can repent. And the blood cleanses. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you choose to deceive, you need to change in order to be good ground. Amen. You can't make good or okay out of deception. Go with me, please. There's so much to talk about here, but you're, you're with me, right? We prayed a minute ago. And go to John, the eighth chapter. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Spirit of God is called the Spirit of Truth, who will guide you and I into all the truth. The Gospel is called the Gospel of Truth. His Word is called the Word of Truth. Truth identifies God in a major way. And by contrast, lying identifies the devil. 
If you, if you see or hear a lie or deception, the enemy is at work every time. God is never involved in any kind of falseness, ever. And this junk, I've heard some people talk about, you know, well, divine deception. That's, that's an abominable term. It is impossible for God to lie. There are all kind of individuals and leaders of groups and religious sects calling themselves Christians that have come up with keeping this and misrepresenting this for the greater good. There's no way God ever condoned or was a part of anybody lying or deceiving somebody for their own good or to protect them. Never. And God never told you or me it was okay to lie in this situation so as not to hurt them or to protect or the end does not justify the means. If it's a lie, the devil's in it. Every time. Somebody's yielding to the devil if there's any kind of deception. Now, why am I talking about this? Because you can't be good ground. What makes good ground good ground? He mentions two things. Honesty. Somebody say honesty. 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 And, and in order to be honest, in a world that is full of lies, you got to have something strong in you. Amen. And the strong thing is that you love the truth. Yes. I'm going to say something you may think is not right, but you'll, you'll find it is. I love the truth more than I love anything or anybody, yes. period. Yes. I thought you're supposed to love Jesus. That's what I just said. Yes. <laughs> he is the truth. I thought you're supposed to love the Word of God. That's what I just got through saying. If you do, and you really do in your heart, then you won't struggle with choices. I've heard people say, well, don't make, me, don't make me lie to you. Don't make me tell a lie. <laughs> Lying should not be an option for us. Ever. We tell the truth or we don't talk. You can say, I don't want to say. I don't want to talk about it. But you don't tell something that you know is not true in an effort to deceive someone. If you do, you are participating in what the devil does himself. Every day he's trying to trick us. He's trying to deceive us. He's trying to get us to believe a lie is true. He's trying to plant his evil stuff in us. Say it out loud if, if you want to. I love, I love the truth. I love the truth more than I love anything or anyone. Now that includes yourself, right? <laughs> the two big reasons people lie are pride and fear. I should have said it the other way around. Fear. <laughs> Y'all know too much about this. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> you know, people think it's funny. They got a two-year-old, three-year-old, and they hear the cookie jar rattle in the kitchen. They go in there, cookie jar's crooked, crumbs all over the counter, chocolate on the little guy's face. You been in the cookie jar? Mm-mm. People think it's funny. It's not funny. 
It's not funny. It won't be funny when there's 15 and lying about taking money out of your purse. This is of the devil. You talk about something that's of the devil, it doesn't get any more devilish than deceiving and lying. It is uniquely him. He fathered lying. Lying did not come from God at all. So there needs to be, I'm not talking about being mean or cruel, but there needs to be strong pillars <laughs> set down about lying is one of the absolute worst things you could ever do in your life. It compromises your faith. It makes the soil of your heart toxic so that the incorruptible seed won't grow in it. Is this serious or is this serious? It destroys trust, which destroys relationships. Now, it'd be hard to find a person in this room or in Branson or watching online who has never told a lie. But thank God for the blood. Thank God for his mercy. But do we need to make a decision that I'm not going to be a liar? Amen. I am not going to be devilish and be a deceiver. I'm not going to be. I'm going to be like Jesus. Right? How many want to be like Jesus? I'm going to be like him. He is the truth. His word is truth. His spirit is truth. And where the spirit leads us, he leads us into truth. And that truth, if you'll receive it and walk in it, it'll make you free. Free. How many believe it'll make you free? If the truth will make you free, what will believing lies do to you? It'll put you in bondage. The truth lets you see and the truth makes you free. Lies blind and lies bind. Do you find John 8? Yes. Verse 31. Is this important? Yes. This is how you live. This is who you are, what you are. And it's how you, how you become and stay good ground. Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Keep reading for the next several verses. And you'll know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The devil is afraid of the truth. Amen. He can't do anything with the truth. He can't overcome it. All he can do is tempt you to reject it for something else. If you receive the truth, nothing he can do can stop it or prevent it. It will make you free. <laughs> It'll make you because what are we talking about? What is the truth? Jesus is the truth. The Word of God is the truth. The Holy Spirit is the truth. Can He make you free? Yes. Verse 33. They answered, we be Abraham's seed. We're never in bondage to any man. And how do you say, you shall be free? Now as you read this eighth chapter, you'll find it became very heated. Very heated intense between him and the religious leaders. They despised him. They grew to hate him. Even though, if you read other scriptures, a number of them believed he was the fulfillment of scripture. They believed it. But they were afraid if they acknowledged it, they would lose their place and their position. And the scripture said they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Well, if you believe he's the fulfillment of Scripture and you're going to ignore it and act like you don't, what have you just done? You have chosen a lie yes. over the truth. He said, Verily I say to you, whoever commits sin is the servant of sin. Keep reading for the next few verses. The servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides ever. If the son therefore shall make you free... You shall be free indeed. I know you're Abraham's seed. 
but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. So are they good ground that God's word seed can grow in? No, his word seed had no place in them. They would not receive it. I speak what I've seen with my father. You do that which you've seen with your father. Now these, these are the Pharisees. These guys have doctrines of divinity. They are leaders in the synagogue. They are the preachers, the teachers, the priests. They said, Abraham's our father. Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children, you'd do the works of Abraham. You'd act like Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth. Do you know, some people will hate you (laughs) if you tell the truth. (laughs) Which I've heard from God. Abraham didn't do this. You do the deeds of your father. They said to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me. Can you see they're getting madder by the minute? You'd love me because I proceeded forth. I came from God. I didn't come of myself. He sent me. How many lift a hand and say, thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending him. He said, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Now, can you see why I'm reading this passage? Oh, yeah. Him that has ears to hear. Or can they hear this? Hmm? Are they excited because some of the incorruptible seed of God's word is coming out of Jesus' mouth? That they, no, they're getting more upset. They're getting more angry. By the moment. Why? Now they're at a place they can't even understand what he's saying, even though they're speaking the same language. Their heart, they're defiant, proud, fearful about losing their place. All these has caused their ears to turn off. The audio is gone, the visual is gone. He said, You're of your father, the devil. He said it publicly where other people could hear. (laughs) These are the preachers with the fancy suits and the degrees. You're of your father, the devil. You'll often hear people talking about, well, we're, you know, no matter what religion you are, we're all the same family and the same. No, honey child. No, it's not true. It's not true. There's two families in the earth. And unless you're born again, you are not a child of God. And you're not in God's family. It's just not true. This is quite politically incorrect. (laughs) Because it's not inclusive. But it's true. (laughs) Am I reading scriptures or not? Remember, I didn't write this. (laughs) He said, you're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Now, Now get this. The devil was not created the devil. God didn't create a devil. He was a being of light. And who knows how long. He was in the presence of God. Could have been millions of years. Who knows? But the Bible said iniquity was found in him. He took the amazing abilities God give him. He's not a human. People people talk about, are there extraterrestrials? We're talking about one right now. Yeah. There's all kind of beings that are not from this planet. He had abilities that God gave him and he perverted those abilities through his pride. 
The devil is the proudest being around. And he knew about truth, but didn't stay in it, abode not in the truth. He decided, I'm going to do something else. And it sounds crazy to us, but he must have been very convincing that a third of the angels believed that he could pull it off. This is not a fairy tale. He said, and it says, there's no truth in him. We need to get this. When you hear people saying, well, the devil told me, you should start laughing. That's right. That's right. He can't tell you the truth. Because <laughs> there's no truth in him. Now, he may start with a verse or a truth, but before he's finished talking, he's going to make it into a lie. He's going to twist it. He's going to corrupt it somehow. There's no truth in him. So if the devil tells you you're not going to make it, rejoice. That's an indication that you are. Is that right? Devil says, God don't love you. You go, I knew he did. I knew he did. And when you said it, that's a sure sign that he does. <laughs> we, need to, we need to get our mind renewed so that we respond right. There's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. This is about truth and lies. Truth and lies. God's word, his incorruptible word seed, every one of them is 100% true. Amen. Not, a, not a shade of falseness, phony, fake, 100% true. Everything God has ever told you or ever will. And people who are godly, and I'm talking to godly people, Amen. right? Amen. Becoming more like him. The more godly a person is, you will see that honesty in their eyes. You'll hear it in the tone of their voice. You can tell when they say something, they're not just saying. I don't like that phrase, I'm just saying. They're not just talking. They're not just mouthing. They mean what they say. They say what they mean. They mean what they say. It's wonderful. You don't find it everywhere. But it's how God is. And the more like him you become, the more you become more and more honest and truthful and genuine. You don't want to be like the devil at all. You want to get rid of all the pride, all the fear, and all the lies. Jesus said, come learn of me. I'm meek. Why? Humility is inseparable from honesty. They go hand in hand. Go with me to Ephesians. Ephesians 4, verse 15. Are we still talking about being good ground? Yes. yes. Tell me the two big qualities that Jesus said made good ground good ground. Honesty. Honesty. Patience or perseverance. That's the word for cheerful endurance. Honesty and perseverance. In Ephesians 4.15, Jesus, excuse me, the Spirit of God through Paul tells us how to grow up in Christ. Speaking the truth in love. Now, sometimes people are mean and, and cruel, and they justify it by saying, I only tell the truth. Mm -mm. There's a lot of stuff, it may be true, but it doesn't need to be said right now. 
they're not in a position to hear it. Love will endeavor to be led and love will be kind. Not hard. Not mean. And sometimes, especially family and friends, even though it is absolutely the truth, they don't want to hear it from you. (laughs) And you need to realize you're not the only one God can use. And there are times you need to zip it and ask God to use whoever he knows they will hear it from. They'll listen to. And then be ready for him to use you with somebody else's family and friends. Right? Right? That's how this works. Send laborers across their path. Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Skip down to verse 20. He says, you have not so learned Christ, talking about these other things. If so be you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts or desires and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man. How many know the new man in Christ is not a liar, not a deceiver, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we're members one of another. We're really lying to ourselves when we're lying to each other. Because we're members of it. And to be what people call a good liar, a proficient liar, you got to believe your own lies to really be convincing. How many can see how devilish all this is? This this has got nothing to do with God. You have run off the tracks. (laughs) Putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we're members one of another. And notice how this goes together. Be ye angry... And sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. He mentions two big things that give place to the devil. And boy, the further I go, the more clearly I see it to be true. Lying and anger. This is how people let wrong spirits into their life. Lying and anger. And you'll see in these three types of ground, there are these two things. The wayside ground. They trod underfoot the word. They're lying to themselves that this is not important. They're not paying it attention. They're not treating it properly. The stony ground. They got offended. They got upset. They got hurt. They got mad and gave place to the enemy. The truth, if you'll be honest, if anybody will be honest, the first time it comes up, you know in your heart, it's not God's fault. All your mess and all your problems. Right? Right? But see, if you don't want the truth, if the truth comes to you and it's your fault, you've made a mistake. If you don't want to hear that, if you don't want to hear that, the devil goes, fine, I got something else for you. It's their fault. It's God's fault. It's the preacher's fault. It's your spouse's fault. They wouldn't help you. And if you get mad and you fume You just opened up your life to the devil. You you just gave place and invited the enemy in and said, tell me some more lies. And the more lies you believe, the madder you'll get and the more bitter you'll get and the more upset you get and it will make your heart ground toxic. And the word won't grow there because it's a word of truth and it grows in honest ground. True seed grows in true ground. Yes. Amen. True heart. 
Be on the watch for temptation to lie and temptation to get mad because it's what the enemy uses to get access into your life and to make you toxic. Didn't the Bible say by a root of bitterness, a lot of people would be defiled? And you see it. I, I've, seen some, I've seen a lie be told. And then it went from this one to that one. And then people get upset and they're up in arms about this thing that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And then people's reputations are slandered. And this is the work of the devil. This is a strife and every evil work. But the truth, the truth will make you free. Look, you, you need one more verse. Did you know it? 1 Timothy. <laughs> I mean, you always need another verse, but talking talk about right now. <laughs> Amen. Um, actually, it's 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy 2. We need this verse. Oh, praise God. Can anybody feel the truth? Is it wonderful? Is it good? Will the blood clean you up? Now, you may have been the biggest liar in the county for 40 years, which would be all the better testimony. Right. Come on, is that right? When you get sanctified and God cleans you up, and in a matter of months and a couple of years, people know, well, I'll tell you one thing about him or her. If they tell you, that's the way it is. Never met a more honest person, truthful person. You can change. Yes. I said, you can change. Yes. All of us have made mistakes. Yes. But let's repent. Repent doesn't just mean cry and feel bad. Repent means change. Amen. Change. Amen. <laughs> let's, let's, let's make an adjustment. And let's love the truth. Amen. And hate a lie. I didn't say hate liars. I said hate a lie. Amen. And love the truth. 2 Timothy 2, verse 25. I've prayed this prayer numerous times over individuals that were in a bad way. The way you get in worse and worse bondage is by rejecting truth. Hmm? If somebody tells you, you know, you got a problem with this, you need to make some changes. If their response is, no, I don't, you're in trouble. If you don't change that, it's going to get worse. You're going to get, you're going to get more blind and more bound. If you humble yourself and go, you're right, I've, I, this thing's gotten out of hand. I need to make changes right now. That's humility. That's honesty. The humble get grace. Yes. Grace means help. God will incline other people's hearts towards you. He'll put strength in you. But if you harden your heart, stiffen your neck, nothing's wrong with me. Well, you got problems too. Are you talking to me about mine? I'm okay. I got this under control. You're about to get way worse. It says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will what? Give, repentance is a gift. Give them repentance to what? To what? Acknowledging, just because something's true doesn't mean you acknowledge it's true. Acknowledging of the truth. That's not the end of the sentence. Verse 26, and... That they may what? Recover. 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 It's possible to recover yourself mm -hmm. That's right. without anybody praying for you, Amen. without any kind of outside thing at all. What's it called? Repentance. Amen. Repentance. What is, what's a big part of repentance? Acknowledging the truth. the truth. I messed up. I was wrong. 
I've done this and it's not okay. It's not right. Acknowledging the truth. And then, if we confess, the Lord said he'd, He forgives, He cleanses. Is that right? Amen. Recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by Him at His will. He's going about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Well, can he just devour and mess up the lives of anybody anytime he wants to? No. No, no, no. How does he do it? People give him place. They give him place. Through lies, through anger, through pride. Next time you're tempted to tell something that's not right. Bite your lip. Do you want to open the door to your life and say, come on in here, devil? No, no. no you don't. Hiding a lie, even for years, means the enemy can stay and cause you problems. Even if you hide it from other folks. I know it's not pretty. But do you want to be free or do you want to be free? Amen. <laughs> I'm getting all kind of looks across the crowd. I, I think I do. No, you do. You, you do not want the enemy to have a right to do stuff in your life by hiding and covering lies. You don't want to do that. And when you're tempted, bite your lip. Quit talking. Shut it down. Or if you blurt it out and you walk away and you realize, I just lied to them. Be strong That's right. and tell them. That's right. That's right. Come on, are y'all with me? Amen. If you need to, call them on the phone. Or if you're still there, turn around and go right back and say, you know, that thing I just told you. <laughs> you go, yeah, it was a lie. Don't try to make it any better than that. Just, what, did you know better? Yeah. Did you say something different what you knew was the truth? Yeah, that's a lie. Miss well, why they what will they think of me? Well, if you do this every other day, they probably won't think too good about that. But if it's not every day, they know themselves that they have said things that weren't right and might not have had the courage you just displayed. Y'all with me, friend? And if you'll do that every time you make that kind of mistake, it'll help break you. From lying, because the next time you're tempted, you go, mm, I don't want to have to go back and tell them that I just lied to them. Hmm? And you'll change. You'll stop yielding to it, and you'll grow in the truth. And in the anger thing, because that's the other thing he mentioned. When you start fuming, when you start getting so mad. We just read Jonah, didn't we? Recently? Recently. Huh? Yes. Remember Jonah yeah. got so mad about that gourd? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord asked him, you got a right to be so mad about this gourd? He said, I've, I've got a right to be mad to death. <laughs> How's Jonah doing at that point? He's not, he's not doing too good. When the Lord asks you, do you have a right to be mad about this? You should just go ahead and slide off your chair and start repenting. Because why, why is he asking you this? Why? You need, to, you, you need to stop yourself. Be spiritual. Stop yourself and go, what am I doing? Why am I so angry about this? What is this to me? What right do I have to be so angry? And if you answer like Jonah, then you know there's a problem. Well, I have, I have a right to be mad to death. You've missed it somewhere. You're, you're opening the door. To the enemy and saying, come on in. Cause me problems. We can cast all our cares over on the Lord. We can forgive people. You know, a whole lot of things is just none of our business. Amen. You'll be a lot happier if you learn that. A whole lot of things are just none of None of my business. Stand on your feet. I want to lead you in a prayer.
Hallelujah. Repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and recovery out of the snare of the devil, out of the trap. Say it out loud, Father God, Father God forgive, me forgive me for any lie, for any, lie any falsehood, any, falsehood any, deception. any deception. There is no Justifiable reason, justifiable reason for lying, for lying and, deceiving. and deceiving. It's of the devil. Of the devil. I, despise I despise it. I hate lying. I hate lying. And, I and I love your truth. I love your word. I love your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Say it out loud. I will acknowledge the truth. If it makes me look bad, if it shows up deficiencies and mistakes, I will acknowledge the truth. I will embrace the truth. I will rejoice in the truth that makes me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.